noises, especially when there's bird noises in the background from a Kia or a Hyundai. Hello, people on the internet watching car reviews. Welcome to this, the 2023 Kia EV6 GT. This is the top highest horsepower performance model of the EV6. And today I'm gonna get it up in the air on the lift, hopefully not get squished. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how it is constructed, and then go give it some electric beams. Whoa, check out that reverse light. That is wild like built into the diffuser. Ah yes, very similar to the EV6 Wind Edition I reviewed about a year ago. You see the rear electric motor? The GT model utilizes an independent five link rear suspension, half of which is comprised out of aluminum, the other half in steel. It's paired with a set of variable dampers. You can see a little pack right here, robot barnacle to control it. Additionally, this has what's called an integrated drive axle. It goes directly from the hub where the wheel mounts straight into the motor. Motor. There is no bolted flange anywhere like on a traditional CV. The rear anti-sway bar on the wind model was 18 millimeter. This GT measures in at well over 22 millimeter in diameter. The EB6 GT rides on Kia Genesis and Hyundai's eGMP chassis. And this one weighs in at 4,795 pounds, 1,073 pounds of which is just in that battery pack alone. There are eight massive bolts of blue paint on their heads that run all the way through the battery pack and attach it to the chassis to make it stiff and not to come flying off if you jump this thing over a house. That's what I would do with an RC car. And you can see this massive finned aluminum casing is also attached right here along the pinch weld. As far as the transmissions go, the front and rear systems are completely divorced from one another. So you have a front and rear electric motor, each of which has its own integrated reduction gear, which is kind of basically the transmission, it has a 10.65 to one final drive ratio. And in that motor housing where the reduction gear sits, there is coolant jackets that go all the way around it to keep the reduction gear as well as the electric motor cool. And there's also an oil bath for the uh, reduction gear. So even though it's electric, still has coolant and oil. Up front, you have a McPherson strut style suspension with dual lower arms, all of which is made out of cast aluminum, as well as the knuckle, the inner and outer tie rod that is steel, and again, it has those adaptive dampers up there. Dual ball joints because dual arms. Look at the size of where this lower link mounts to the subframe though. That's gotta be the size of a grapefruit. The underside of electric car is pretty much like it's called a skateboard. It's just flat and slick. Lots of hairy cardboard on this one though. Now, front anti-sway bar measures in at 23 millimeter, which is the same as the rear drive wind model. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? <sighs> that was good. You can tell this is a heavy vehicle. Massive brakes, but they had to work hard. As far as the regen cycle goes, I have these paddles on either side of the steering wheel that will vary the amount of regenerative braking from nothing to level one, two, three, and then max, which is one pedal. That braking was just, that was excessive. <laughs> it's accomplished thanks to a set of 15 inch or 381 millimeter front rotors with these neon yellow four piston monoblock calipers. The wheels, they are a 21 by eight and a half with a positive 43 and a half millimeter offset wrapped in a set of two 55, 40 Goodyear Eagle F1 tires. And they're the asymmetric three, which has this little electric drive ready logo on the side of it. Also got to give credit to the electric motors for doing their part with the regenerative braking. 
Out back, you get a 14.2 inch or 361 millimeter rotor with a huge single pot caliper and the the floating caliper is also painted to match up front, which is nice. The wheel and tire, square stance, same size all the way around. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. Bolstering assessment. <laughs> this is great. These are excellent bolstering seats. They do have heat elation, which is kind of surprising considering the nature of this seat. I mean, it has manual adjusters. It's a it's a real performance seat, that's for sure. Has a little pass-throughs for a harness. A steering wheel's flat bottom. And that neon yellow green stitching everywhere. Well, there's a bathtub in the center floor right here. You could fill up with ice and, oh, well, it says don't do that, but you can put fish in it. As far as drive modes go, I have some little paddles on the steering wheel. One says drive modes, kind of self-explanatory. Press that. I can go from eco to normal and to sport. And then I also have one on the right that says GT. Press that, GT mode. Whoa, when you put it in GT mode, it drops your range down by about 10, it, almost 10 miles. Hmm. And then when you put it in GT mode, it also defeats your traction control right there. You can do it manually if you want off to the left of the steering wheel. But uh, let's see what this thing can do. Ready, go. Oh, geez. <laughs> Whoa, it broke traction. That's good. Oh, this thing's fucking rocket. Holy shit. It actually shuffled a little bit taking off. Pop. Wow, that's actually light for how big it is. The hood on this thing is massive. It's part of the fender as well. Underneath the Frid of the 2023 Kia EV6 GT is one of two permanent magnet synchronous electric motors. One is located in the rear and that one is larger and produces 270 kilowatts, which is equivalent to 362 horsepower on its own. Up front, you get a 160 kilowatt electric motor, which is about 214 horsepower, giving you a total combined system output of 576 horsepower from 6,800 to 9,000 RPM and 545 pound-feet of torque from zero to 4,200 RPM. Since I already know that this does come apart, I wanted to take a look so we can see the front electric motor. I remove that little rubber piece and then this just pops out. Aha, there is the front electric motor underneath the inverter right here and i think this guy right there is for your cabin air filter it looks like the little door where that would be housed now digging in a little bit deeper on the electric motor something that i found neat about this because it is incorporated into the same housing as the reduction gear it utilizes oil from the reduction gear to spray onto the electric motor to help cool it also, this utilizes what's called hairpin winding technology. So the copper windings on the motor core are wound hairpin tight. It's a similar technology as what GM utilizes in their electric motors, but uh, not the same because this is a Kia. You're welcome for that thorough explanation on an engineering level. A uh, obvious benefit to having hairpin windings, meaning it would be tighter and more compact, is that would be more efficient. I'm still so obsessed with the fact they put a little light inside there. That's just like such an excessive little attention to detail step. Let's snap that back together. There you go. I don't know what you could really store in there. Maybe like some extra socks and underwear on a road trip. I, it would keep them dry. This is interesting, this little sheet metal device bolted to the top of the strut tower. Also has like a strut tower brace built into the actual tower itself. Goes across the top underneath all that plastic. And here is the expansion chamber for cooling your batteries and your electric motors and a reduction gear, all that stuff. Still has a traditional 12 volt automotive battery just for your accessories. Cooling fan warning. You can't see it through these plastic teeth to chew bugs on the front grill, but these are active aero shutters. I'll open and close the heat exchangers and AC condenser right behind there. This thing's actually pretty neat. As far as handling goes, you definitely can feel the weight of this vehicle if you start really pushing it. 
It does do a good job of masking its weight because all the weight is down low and the all-wheel drive system on this thing is brilliant. Oh, that just made me want to vomit. <laughs> It really does feel like you're just driving an RC car. I don't know, maybe because everything is just drive by wire. It doesn't have a real mechanical connection to the road when you're driving it. Not in a bad way, it's just different. Given how large the diameter of the wheel is and the fact that it's got Eagle F1s on it, I was actually surprised there's not a lot of road noise in here, even though I'm yelling at my GoPro right now and I don't know why. I'm just kind of excited because I get excited to review cars, especially when there's bird noises in the background from a Kia or a Hyundai. That's what happens when I have caffeine. The Meridian sound system in here is on point. I'm a huge fan of it. And calm sea waves. No, I, where's my bird noises? Rainy day, cafe, warm fireplace, snowy village. Yeah, bird noises. The whole entire screen is one giant thing with your gauge cluster. The dash has this really neat texture to it and it has the stripe that says GT in the corner and it has those highlighter yellow ambient lights that are inside the vents all throughout the piping in the interior. I love the controls for the infotainment system and climate control. You just simply tap between these two options and it changes to a complete different set of buttons. Wireless charge pad, cameras and you can turn off the annoying parking sensors. This thing's absolutely full of modern tech and safety features. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. The dome light looks like a little robot with his tongue out. It's like, <laughs> that's so cute. Even the rear door cards are completely covered in suede. I like the texture right here for the speaker grill, and the Meridian sound system, also up here by the Twitter. I, I don't know where you'd put a harness bar back here, but these seats are sick. I like these. Heated rear seats. Oh, you can see the glow. That is, I love the color of the glow. It's actually a nice cup holder assembly. Whoa, it slides. I didn't know that. Do these recline? Oh, they do recline. No, nope, they don't. They squish you. I love the neon yellow, neon green, whatever, stitching on the seats. I don't know who would sit them straight up like that. You'd be sick. Storage space, open. That's a trunk and I have junk in it. Underneath the rear storage area, you get a tire mobility kit and a plug so you can charge other things. The one massive downfall with the GT though is the abysmal range. Just barely over 200 miles in optimum conditions when you're not in GT mode. What happens when the battery starts getting old and it doesn't have 100% of its original capacity? And also, if you look at a lot of performance internal combustion engine vehicles, they don't really have that much of a range either. Just over 200 miles is kind of common, actually. However, you have a larger infrastructure with gas pumps that you can go to. My number one complaint with Kia's EV6 is the fact that it does not come with a charge cable. I went and bought my own, even though I don't own an electric car just so I could charge this. The button for the charge door looks like a little gas pump, except it has a plug. It's cute. Open. I do like that the charge door is robotic though. Nice touch. You can see on the gauge cluster, your charging status when you walk away. On a full charge, I personally saw 211 miles of range. Despite the downfall of this thing having a limited range compared to its competitors, where it definitely makes up for it though, is in how fast this will charge thanks to its ability to accept a 350 kilowatt hour charge rate. So on the screen, I'm displaying the current Mustang Mach-E GT with its 270 mile range battery versus the Tesla Model Y performance with its 303 mile range battery and its corresponding charge times compared to this Kia EV6 GT. For whatever reason, manufacturers make it fairly difficult to see their charge rates and times, but from what I can see, the Mach-E GT tops out at a 250 kilowatt hour charge, whereas the Tesla Model Y tops out at a 210 kilowatt hour charge. It's kind of like living with a performance vehicle on E85. That's, that's what having a performance EV is like. You get a lot of power, it's fun, but you gotta be near a place to refuel it. Out of all the EVs I've reviewed thus far, this is up there towards one of my top favorites. I personally like the styling of the Ionic 5 because it's that weird retro future look. But uh, yeah, this, this thing's hard to beat for the price.
It is now time to score this thing. And first up is the bean score, the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the 2023 Kia EV6 GT gets a rating of flies. I just heard a fly whiz by. Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value. And this thing in the low 60s gets a rating of followed by the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance. And this RC car is getting a rating of it's all relative to your technical capabilities, I guess. Followed by the squid score, the assessment of handling, and it is getting a rating of. <laughs> Lastly is the penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the EV6 GT gets a rating of. <laughs> I have to say out of all the EV offerings on the market right now, this is up there as a top contender. It's a chicken tender. I'm, I need lunch. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.